so the title of the presentation is Jira State of the Union. It was actually delivered last week in Berlin during, during Atlas Camp. Um, and we are going to deliver it together with Eve. Um, so a few rounds of introduction about myself first. I'm working uh, with Atlassian since March 2013. Uh, and I'm working in the office uh, in Poland, in, in Gdańsk. And I'm responsible for a number of initiatives or projects within Jira, including Jira Ecosystem, Jira Importers Planning, and Jira Capture. Uh, if you want to, or I can just introduce yourself uh, to the others. So yeah, Yves has joined us uh, earlier this year, uh, also working in, in Gdańsk, in Poland, and she's responsible for uh, Jira Enterprise. I probably have to move over here. So I have four topics to discuss, or if you will, four pillars of investment within Jira, and that is software on demand, service desk, and, and Eve is going to deliver the enterprise part. But before I dive into this, uh, just a quick uh, roadmap picture for you. So we have released Jira 6.2 earlier this year, and we are approaching the release of Jira 6.3. We are really close to this release. But uh, let me ask a question, because I, I know that uh, in case of enterprise companies, large companies, the adoption of the latest version uh, isn't as fast as with smaller companies. So uh, who is using Jira 6.2 today? Raise your hand. 6.2. Right, a few. 6.1. 6, 6, 0, right, 5, 2, okay, older versions than the 5, 2, okay, so as I said, the adoption of the, of the new releases isn't, isn't as fast as possible, I would like to encourage you through these slides here to actually move over to the latest uh, release and I'm going to, to prove why it's, uh, why it's so great. So the first topic that I wanted to discuss, or the first pillar of investment, is the software. Um, let me quote uh, Atlassian Mission here, because I already did that earlier in his presentation. Atlassian exists to unleash the potential in every team to advance humanity through the power of software. We are focusing on many teams, but one team is actually very important. It's, it's the most important team for us, and it's the software team, software developer team. And it's, it's not just the case for Jira. It's, it's the focus for every Atlassian product. Every Atlassian product has a goal to unleash the potential of software teams to, to change the world. But because this is a Jira State of the Union presentation, I'm going to dive into the Jira part of that. So, um, some time ago we have uh, started to analyze the process of the, of the development. And we have actually found uh, a, a quite a peculiar problem to solve. This is a problem of context switching. So, so let me tell you a, a bit of a story. Imagine that you have a developer, and this developer is asked to fix a bug or to deliver a solution to a user story. So first thing that this developer is doing is he's going to Jira to find the specific issue for that. And once he knows what the issue is, he creates a, a, a branch, uh, he starts to uh, he moves over to, uh, to do that, he moves over to, to Stash or Bitbucket, then he switches over to his favorite IDE, and he starts to actually develop the code, then he makes some pull requests, again, maybe change some more in the code, there, eventually, uh, the code is ready, it's been merged, potentially released, and the issue is closed. But throughout that process, there is a lot of context switching, a lot of changes of different tools. So can we make it simpler? Can we, can we simplify this process? So, yes, we can. And actually, we actually started this process already. In Jira 6.2, we have released a feature that allows the developer to create a branch uh, from within the Jira issue. And not only do that, but actually also see the, uh, or can access really easily the comments and then the pull requests, so that at least one of these steps, one of these context switching can be eliminated. You can go directly from Jira to his favorite ADE and start to develop the code. And we are not stopping there. There is another feature coming pretty soon that will allow for issue to be automatically transitioned through the workflow that is assigned to it once uh, based on the changes that happen in Bitbucket and stuff. And again, uh, d depending on the workflow, these this transitions might be really simple or it might be really complex. But the point is that the user, the developer, doesn't have to go back and forth between Jira and Stash or Bitbucket. It will happen automatically. 
Speaking about the statuses of the issues, um, in Jira 6.2 we have introduced this feature called status lozenges. Uh, a lozenge is uh, this rectangular shape that it describes the status of an issue and it looks great, right? And it actually looks great consistently through different pages in Jira. You, you will see the same status lozenge in the workflow editor, in issue view page, in the issue navigator, but that's, that's no, not why we introduced it. It actually gives you additional information. So, as you can see, the lozenge uh, can be displayed in different colors. And the color bears the information about the type or the category of the status in which the issue is. Uh, and we have three such categories. Issues that haven't been started yet, issues that are in progress, and issues that are done. And depending on the color, you will be able to tell really fast, even in a very complex workflow, what is the actual status category for that particular issue. And what is more, you can actually also search for the status category using JQL. But the life of an issue starts when it is created. Uh, so there is, this is a feature that we are working on right now. It will be delivered hopefully really soon. And I must say, I really like it. So it allows you to create <coughs> issues really fast in context. So, so let me explain what it means. Uh, if you go to your plan board in Jira Agile, uh, you will see a number of iterations. Some of them may be active, there will be some that are inactive, they are still being planned, and there will be potentially some, some backlog at the bottom. In each of these sections, you will see such a little widget at the bottom. It just says create issue and it's blank. If you click on it, you can start <coughs> typing your summary, your single line of text. When you press enter, the issue is going to be created. Now, that sounds rather simple, but that's, that's no law. Actually, the magic happens once you press the enter, because depending on the context in which the widget is displayed, the newly created issue will be injected with the values in different fields. So your uh, plan board in Agile is defined using, using some JQL. You potentially also have some quick filters and an epic that you can select on the, on the left side in the version. So all of these contexts will be extracted and injected into the newly created issue. So with just a single line of text and single press of enter key, you have an issue that is inside the very uh, iteration or backup that you wanted it to be with potentially dozens of field or, uh, fields already pre-filled with data. The good thing about it is that it actually was created as a solution, the backend of the solution is created in Jira, and we will introduce more places with the widget. So imagine an issue view page and the subtasks. Again, you do not have to go back and forth, just single line of text and every field from the parent issue will be injected into the new one. So, so pretty, pretty awesome feature. Another feature that we are currently working on and improving is uh, Jira importers plugin. Uh, we actually call it Jim. Uh, so, <laughs> Jim is a, is a sort of a broken acronym for Jira Importers plugin. Jim uh, allows you to import data from different other third party systems, but also from file formats directly into Jira. Uh, and we provide a number of such uh, formats out of the box. Actually, some of them are created as plugins to Jim itself. So Jim is a plugin that is also pluggable. And one of such plugins is JSON Importer. JSON is a very flexible data format uh, that, that is probably the most flexible format there is today. And we are using it to, to import data into Jira. Uh, import, a good thing for uh, you to know is that JSON Importer actually comes with its sibling. Uh, we have also a JSON Exporter. Uh, it's, a, it's a feature that not so many people know about. So you can export the data from one Jira instance, perform certain alterations of it, should you need to do that, import it back in another instance of, of Jira. Uh, and not only the new issues will be created, but the existing ones will be updated as well. So it's a nice way of doing massive bulk operations on, on Jira issues from outside of Jira. Uh, important thing to know is that the REST API is going to be published really soon for the JSON uh, importer, so you also will be able to do that from your add-ons. And as we were doing the improvements in, in JSON importer, we have also uh, built uh, a new feature that is planned to be released pretty soon. It's called a CSV importer for users. So today, in order to use the 
uh, in order to use Jim, you need to be a Jira admin. But it's also a feature that is requested for regular users. If, if a user has a right access to a specific project, he will be able to bulk import or update issues stored in his CSV format. So for example, worked on an Excel spreadsheet while on a plane somewhere without network connectivity. Um, so this is coming. Uh, I mentioned that software teams are the most important for us at Atlassian, but we also encourage the vendors, actually this, is, this was part of the presentation last week in Atlas Camp, uh, to, to promote this, this approach. Um, from the perspective of users and customers, you will be able to, to see blog posts about new fantastic add-ons that the vendors in the, our ecosystem create to address the software team's uh, requirements. All right, second topic that I would like to bring up is on-demand. Um, why is on-demand so important for us? So this is, this is a, a graph that um, pictures the uh, growth of new customers depending on the platform. I, I have to underline this is the new customers, not the total number of customers. Total number of customers obviously grows even faster than that. As, a, as you can see, we have introduced on-demand platform sometime in 2007, and since then the growth of new customers for on-demand is, is almost exponential. Uh, in fact, as of today, two-thirds of our new customers are choosing on-demand uh, versus behind the firewall deployment. Uh, why only two-thirds? So one of the questions that have been asked over and over again during the um, meetings and, and events that Atlassian is performing is uh, how can I create a plugin or how can I use the plugin that is provided for BTF, for behind the firewall, in my on-demand uh, deployment? And uh, we have addressed that problem. Earlier this year we have introduced our new plugin platform. It's called Atlassian Connect 1.0. And I, I, I wanted to actually thank here, uh, Dizer, because you have sent uh, a couple of developers to help us build this platform. It was only thanks to the massive effort of, uh, of many vendors, especially uh, Dizer, that made this release possible. Uh, two such events uh, to, to help us build the, the platform were, were held uh, later last year, one in Amsterdam and, and one in Sydney. Atlassian Connect uh, 1.0 is ready, and today, several months after its introduction, introduction, we already have 20 plugins. It may not seem to be much as compared to the number of plugins that you can use for BTF, but the point is that we have just started, and this number is going to grow really, really fast. It's going to grow as fast and as, and as exponentially as you have seen on the other graphs. Uh, out of these 20 plugin add-ons that we have, only three are created by Atlassian, and they are mostly demonstration add-ons just to show how to do that. Um, 17 were created by vendors. Some of them are commercial, some of them are free, uh, and they are all available on, on our marketplace. Let me explain how this platform works. Uh, so traditionally, uh, all the plugins created for BTF, our previous uh, platform, were created in such a way that they were run as a code within the same Java virtual machine where Jira is. And they were sharing the resources, sharing database access, sharing plenty of API points within Jira. Atlassian Connect changes this approach. Uh, in Atlassian Connect, the whole architecture is spanning across three nodes. So node, node number one is the Jira server. And this is our on-demand Jira instance running somewhere in the cloud. The second node, is the server on which Atlassian Connect code is being deployed. Again, this might be some server in a cloud. This might be a server hosted within the vendor's uh, network. The point is that they have to see each other network-wise. And then the third node in that graph is the web browser of the user. So what are the building blocks that are actually, and how they are spanned across this? So the first building block of Atlassian Connect is REST API, and it's used to allow for the add-on to communicate and send <coughs> certifications or uh, requests to perform certain action from the add-on to Jira. And they are also, the REST API is obviously also used by JavaScript run on the, on the browser page and also perform certain operations in Jira. 
sibling of REST API uh, is, is webhooks. Uh, they are sibling because they also used to, are used to notify about certain events, but in this case, they look in the other direction. So uh, Jira, uh, when it uh, sees certain event, it notifies the Atlassian Connect out and about such, uh, such events. The third building block is the GUI integration. And it works in such a way that Jira server builds pages with certain iframes exposed to the, for the add-on. And add-on injects its own content into these iframes. Uh, from the user perspective, who is watching the whole situation from the browser, uh, this is a seamless type of integration. The user will not even know where the add-on begins and wh where the Jira page starts. And of course, there is a JavaScript that I have mentioned. And then finally, the fourth building element is called entity properties. And they allow for the add-ons to store and retrieve data within the Jira server, uh, add-on specific data that can be used to, to uh, store additional information. Let's take a look at REST API. Uh, really quickly here, I just wanted to mention that we have over 120 REST API points, uh, actually accept, uh, accepting multiple operations. So, uh, you know, put, get, delete, and so on. If, so if you multiply it by the operations, this number is much, much higher. We also have an older SOAP API that is deprecated, and it's not supported within Atlassian Connect, so uh, that's probably a solution more for, <laughs> for the vendors rather than, than customers. Uh, we are migrating SOAP API onto REST. We are around 80% advanced in this effort. When it comes to GUI integration, this is the this is the interesting part. We have 12 different points, uh, different L points within the Jira GUI where uh, such an integration can happen, starting from uh, web panels through generic pages, ending on dialog. So it's it's possible to create most of the uh, or recreate most of the GUI integrations of uh, mm, our older uh, platform, the P2 platform um, in in Atlassian Connect. Uh, two things that I wanted to mention here, actually one I have already mentioned, is that this integration is seamless. So from the user perspective, user will in most cases not even know which part of the GUI is rendered by the add-on and which part is rendered by Jira. So it's pretty much the same as with regular add-ons. The second thing is that uh, these iframes are context aware. So uh, let me give you an example. Let's say, let's say we have an issue view patch. And there is an iframe rendered, it's a web panel rendered within an issue view page. Not only Adam will know about the fact that it's rendered within an issue view page, it will know about the actual issue for which it was rendered. So it can react accordingly to the context in which, in which the GUI integration happens. <coughs> Finally, the, the, the third element, the, sorry, the fourth element is entity properties. And as I mentioned, they allow you to they allow the add-ons to store additional data against issues, projects, and actually comments, uh, which are which are not mentioned here, and also to retrieve it. Uh, but the point is that it also, in case of issue properties, it is also possible to use JQL to, to search for the existence and actually retrieve the data. Uh, I know this may be a bit of an abstract concept, so let me give you some examples where this can be used. So, for instance, an add-on can store map coordinates next to Jira issue and then render such a map within one of the iframes using the coordinates retrieved from issue properties. Or it can store private or public to-do lists or labels or store some form of synchronization status with other third-party systems or version, store versions of issues. Actually, it's only the imagination that sort of stops me from you know, building this list really long. Uh, last week, during Atlas Camp, one of our uh, employees have created a, an add-on for Atlassian Connect that integrates Jira with any.do. Uh, do you know what any.do is? Yeah. Does anyone, is anyone using this? Yeah, so, so just for, for those who do not know, this is a um, cloud-based system that allows you to create really fast to-do list. And it, you can access this to-do list from the web page, or from your mobile phone, or from a desktop uh, mm, software. Uh, so what Tony created is the integration with, with any to do. You can create a list of simple to-dos next to your Jira issues. And they will be stored in the cloud by any to do uh, and basically shown to you later in the, in the Jira GUI. Um, I mentioned that Atlassian Connect is our second platform for plugins. 
so um, a few words about these two platforms right now. Uh, the, the older version that is working uh, within the Jira, uh, w w within the same virtual machine where the Jira works, is called P2 or Plugins P2. Uh, in 2013, around a year ago, we had only one platform, and that sort of line represents the point in time and the adoption of Atlassian Connect. Right now, we are probably somewhere in here. So Atlassian Connect covers some of the areas that, can, that were covered with P2, not all of them. Uh, we want to be around this place by the end of next year, but the point is that Atlassian Connect, due to its nature, will probably never be able to cover all the plugin points that are supported by P2. We will mm, do our best to make this section as small as possible, uh, but it, it, it will probably never be uh, will probably never disappear at all. Uh, so what it means from the uh, perspective of an enterprise customer, it, it means that Atlassian Connect is the uh, platform that is going to gradually replace P2, uh, and we are working together with vendors to actually make sure that it happens in such a way that it's not uh, causing you any problem. Uh, Atlassian Connect as of today is um, only for on-demand, but we are actually working towards making it available for BTF deployments as well. Actually, the first step in that path is planned for, for a near future. It will allow for Atlassian Connect add-ons to work in such deployments where Jira is not actually hosted on-demand. It's hosted on one of our, on one of our server, uh, on one of your servers um, uh, within the LAN network, provided, of course, that the connectivity is assured. So, uh, depending on the size and the, uh, and the type of customer, we have um, verified that 60 to 70% of our customers who have BTF deployment actually have this uh, connectivity uh, provided today. Uh, this is not going to solve all the problems, obviously, but this is just the first step and we, we are going to, to, to move on from there. Uh, the third topic that I wanted to discuss really fast is Service Desk. Um, so again, let me bring up this quote. Uh, but this time, I, uh, this time I wanted you to focus on, on these two words. We want to make sure that every team uh, is advanced uh, and every team, uh, every team's potential is unleashed. And uh, the first non-software team that we have focused is the IT help desk, and that was already something that that um, Jose mentioned in his presentation. And as a result, we have created service desk. And Service Desk is our fastest organically built product in Atlassian. Uh, the, the numbers are, are really fantastic and the adoption of this, of this product is, is really, really great. Um, it comes with its own knowledge base uh, and with, its, uh, with SOA. Uh, if you haven't checked it out already, I strongly encourage you to take a look how, how, it, uh, how it feels. Um, what is important from the growth of this product um, is that it is actually built on top of Jira platform. And even though it doesn't provide its own connectivity just yet, we are, we are working on this. Uh, because of the fact that it's built on top of Jira, it allows uh, connectivity to, to Jira and consequently to the service desk. And that means that integrations with all types of systems, uh, currently not natively covered by Jira as possible, starting from asset management through customer relationship management tools, network monitoring or management, Social media interaction, telephony, sky's the limit. Whenever help desk can help in, in this in these areas, this connectivity can be done today using the uh, APIs that are existing in Jira. So that covers service desk, and right now I'm going to give stage to Eve, who's going to talk about enterprise. Thank you. Uh, am I loud enough? Okay. Yes. Um, it's not a secret, actually it's pretty obvious for all of you that uh, the needs of large organizations are slightly different than those of small teams and at Atlassian we're aware of that. Um, actually when it comes to Jira we hear uh, a lot of feedback from our large customers but that feedback usually can be divided into uh, three uh, types of, of feedback, three sections. So uh, just today uh, we heard about performance challenges in existing large-scale instances. Uh, we heard questions about compliance of Jira 
with uh, high level IT administration requirements and there are also concerns uh, whether Jira as an application will be able to hold a uh, growing uh, scale uh, of, of usage of Jira within, within an organization. Uh, so in order to address those issues, uh, Atlassian decided to invest in development of a new high-end solution for, for Jira deployment, which is going to be Jira data center offering. And uh, as an offering, uh, it enables to uh, deploy Jira in a clustered environment where Jira application is installed on uh, clustered uh, web nodes. Uh, which connect to the same database and the same uh, file system and it is the load balancer at the, at the front which directs users to individual web nodes and is responsible for spreading the, the, um, the load uh, on the optimal levels. And that kind of uh, deployment allows to address those uh, most important needs which are high availability and scalability of the solution while also providing uh, higher performance of the application as such. Um, and uh, the, one of the important features uh, of this offering is that it is only the case of the backend uh, implementation of, the, of the, the deployment of the instance. So for the end users, this is still the same uh, good Jira that they know and they love, so there is no change in the, in the application features. So it's only the, the, the type of the deployment style. And the uh, next thing important for you might be that uh, when I'm talking about Jira specifically here, uh, that pattern will be followed by uh, Confluence data center and Stash data center offerings. Uh, so it will be consistent among our, uh, our applications. Um, okay. Uh, to make sure that the solution uh, works according to our expectations and that it actually provides uh, the features that we promise uh, it will give, uh, we started using uh, clustered Jira on our largest uh, Jira implementation available for customers, which is uh, JiraAtlassian.com. We are using that one since March and there were no serious problems with that. It's, it's running uh, pretty well, but this is not all. Uh, we actually encouraged a couple of our uh, enterprise customers uh, who were brave enough to try on this, this very new uh, <coughs> solution uh, on, on their uh, own premises. Uh, so we launched the Pioneer, Pioneer program uh, where 10 uh, enterprise customers decided to uh, run first a, a cold test, so just to, to test uh, the capabilities of, uh, of clustered Jira version on some test environment. Uh, that is uh, already going to, to, to the end and uh, the customers are successively migrating to the, to the production with, with that kind of uh, deployment environment. And uh, I, I, I'm aware that uh, you may have already some doubts that uh, that kind of migration must be a huge effort for a company to <coughs> migrate from a single server instance into a clustered environment. Uh, we were also afraid of that, we had a lot of concerns, but it turned out that uh, that migration is not that scary and uh, uh, we even had an example of one of those pioneer customers who was able to migrate into data center from single server within a single day. And uh, those instances are also running without any major uh, problems, not to mention any blockers. Of course, uh, these pioneer customers are reporting some issues to us, but that was actually the, the, the aim of, of this pioneer program to spot uh, and a, even the smallest uh, problems of, of that kind of solution as, uh, as fast as possible so that when we launch it, uh, we are sure that it, it, it works perfectly fine. Uh, so I already said that for the end users, the Jira data center will be no different from a single server Jira application. 
Uh, however, the plugins uh, need to be adjusted to the different uh, deployment environment. And uh, uh, Atlassian provided guidelines and instructions for vendors uh, who would like to uh, make sure that their plugins uh, are compatible with a clustered environment. And these guidelines are already available. And once a vendor uh, mends the plugin and makes sure that it, it, it works fine uh, in, this new, uh, in this new version of, of deployment, uh, they can label uh, their plugin uh, in our marketplace with the data center label so that actual users, uh, customers, and, and administrators uh, are sure that they can use this very plugin in a cluster environment. So as you see, uh, the solution as such, technically speaking, is almost ready. We are at the latest stages of uh, testing and, and finishing touches. Uh, so this is true, this is existing. It's not a science fiction I'm talking about. However, the uh, pricing and launch date are still to be established. Uh, so I'm not, I'm not able to give any more details in, in this matter, but uh, this is something to, to, that is going to happen in a, in a very near future once we just complete this, these detailed arrangements. Uh, so this is about Jira Data Center as a uh, brand new separate uh, Jira offering uh, which is going to be available as, as, as a new, actually a new product. Uh, however, we uh, still uh, put a lot of effort to make Jira as an application uh, awesome for all of our customers. So we are also investing in providing new features within uh, generic uh, Jira application uh, that are also useful for large-scale implementations. And I will just quickly mention a, a couple of those features that are either released within Jira 6.2 release or will be launched uh, very soon. Uh, I think one the, the most important feature is the configuration audit trial, which is uh, an activity stream of configuration changes or important activities within Jira applications so that uh, Jira admin can uh, find out uh, who made some, some important changes in the application, when the change uh, happened, uh, what kind of activities were, were performed in the, in the instance. Uh, what is important here is that uh, this, this audit trial list is completely pluggable, so both for, for customers it is possible to export uh, the audit and perform some, uh, some operations uh, in, in an external system, and also plugins uh, are able to uh, inject their own events into the audit log so that they, th those events can also appear uh, in the audit log. Uh, some other small features uh, useful in, in large-scale instances uh, is the issue creator field, which is a, a new field uh, that enables to separate a person who creates manually the issue from uh, the person who initiated the, the, the creation, because in, in some cases someone who asked to, to, uh, to have it, the, the, the issue uh, put into, into Jira is, uh, is, is a different person than the one who actually uh, puts it in, in the application. And there is also uh, a nice feature which is limited user picker that uh, enables to limit the list of users that appear uh, on selected uh, user picker field. Mm, by user role or a group and uh, it really helps to find the, the, the user that we are looking for in this uh, huge list of, of thousands of users on our instance. And uh, the last small one which is still under construction and is going to be released uh, soon is the bulk edit of multi-select fields uh, that will provide more options uh, for uh, bulk uh, operations like uh, replacing the values, removing or, or adding the values 
and I'm sure it will, it will help uh, to, to perform bulk operations uh, in, in the big uh, instances of Europe. And uh, just to uh, repeat, uh, those four features that I just mentioned, they are not specific for the Jira data center offering. These are the, the features that are, uh, are or will be available uh, in the normal Jira app, so they, are, they will be uh, also in on demand in uh, classic single server uh, implementations. So uh, this is all from the enterprise part. I'll let Bartek finish this up. Okay, so you have seen tons of investments that we are making into Jira. I hope uh, this gave you enough of the information to actually move over to newer releases uh, that it, it, it is providing you the driver to, to upgrade. Uh, there are tons of opportunities regardless of, of the actual investment pillar or investment area that we are making. Um, that concludes our quick presentations. Uh, are there any questions? When you talk about the integrations, possible integrations with uh, service desk, you talk about C uh, CRM, uh, social media, and so on. Yep. Are those actually planned by Atlassian to? Um, to so. Uh, Yes and no. Uh, in case of asset management, this is actually something that Atlassian has on its radar. Uh, we do not have any solid plans yet. I cannot give you any dates or anything beyond the fact that this is an area that we would like to explore a bit more. Uh, but this is the only area, from, from at least this list that, that I have provided, uh, that, that we have on our radar. So. Uh, can, uh, Customer relation management, uh, social media, telephony, what was the fifth one? I, I forgot already. In, in the other areas, it's, it's pretty safe to, to explore it, yes. Más preguntas? Recordar que algunas de las cosas que han estado comentando son soluciones que se van a ir incorporando en próximas fechas que van a enriquecer la oferta que hay actualmente, es decir, la estructura actual no, no, no cambia desde el punto de vista de lo que ya hay, pero sí se van a incluir estas nuevas posibilidades en forma de data center con uh, algunos de estos elementos que se han ido comentando durante la presentación. ¿Preguntas? ¿No? Pues cerramos por aquí la charla. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Gracias. Thank you.